Welcome to the Gentleman Project Podcast. This is Corey Moore. And I'm Kirk Chug. Today we have Jeremy Dunn with us. Jeremy has been involved with the Gentleman Project for many years. He was on the original board and was one of the people that inspired me and motivated me to make the Gentleman Project something besides something that happened in the walls of my own home. In Northern Utah, he's the insurance guy. He happens to be my insurance guy as well. He and his family have been in the property and casualty insurance business for many years. Jeremy's a very intentional dad. He's a regular listener of the podcast, and he's a really, really good dad. You'll love listening to Jeremy today and uh, getting to know him. He's prepared today. Um, We've got something that he does in his home that he's prepared to talk about today, and hopefully it brings value to you. So welcome to the podcast this morning, Jeremy. So glad to be here, you guys. I can't (laughs) tell you how much I appreciate what you're doing. It's amazing. I just love both of you and appreciate what you're doing for our community so much in the world. It's a really good thing. Well, thanks. Thanks. We're, uh, we're all about creating good content and, and if, if it benefits somebody, then it's all worth it. Well, it sure benefited me. I can speak for myself and I know it's benefited me and a lot of my friends. I have a lot of friends that listen in or just love what you guys are doing. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Well, tell us a little bit about you first, your family dynamics, uh, kids and ages, uh, and what's going on right now. Wonderful. I I married Melissa, my wife, uh, year 2000, so we can keep that straight. It's pretty easy to remember. Uh, (laughs) She's love of my life. The second I saw her, and I don't believe in love at first sight per se, but the second I saw her, I knew she was the one. We've been really blessed. Uh, Still love her the same 10 times more, 100 times more than I did when I met her. Uh, We've got five beautiful kids. We've got a 15 or a We've got a son right now on a mission in Arizona who's 19. Uh, we've got a daughter that's uh, 17 years old. It's a high school uh, senior this year. We've got a, a 14-year-old son, an 11-year-old daughter, and a 8-year-old son. So five kids, five wonderful kids that I love very much. So you have this personality in my mind of just <laughs> fairly happy-go-lucky. Um, you come across to me as someone who works really hard, but doesn't take himself too serious. And you're always extremely kind to others, uh, myself included. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. I, thank you. Yeah. Well, oh, it's my, getting thick in here. Well, my question, question here. No, that's, that's legit. That's legit. My question to you really is how do you teach, you know, that, that kind of attitude, that kind of, I always tell my kids happiness is a choice. Yeah. But how do you teach your kids some of those principles of, showing kindness and love towards other and being the kind of person you are. Thank you. First of all, you know how we all are. We're all our own worst critic. So I worry about that. You know, I try to be kind and I hope I am right. I spent a lot of time with my kids talking about kindness. It's something that matters a lot to our family. You know, we'll talk later a little bit about things that we do for our kids. But one thing I ask them all the time is, is there someone who you see um, that maybe you could help make them have a better day? You know, just by saying hi, hi, or just being a little bit more friendly or being a friend. You know, there's kids all throughout our schools. I get a chance to serve on a few volunteer boards. One is the Weber School District Foundation. I'm really proud of that. And we spend a lot of time working on things. And we've done a lot with the Hope Squad over the last few years. And we see the the pain that goes on in our schools and some of the kids that really don't have friends and aren't able to um, have quite the experience maybe some of us did in high school or in junior high. And so that's something we talk a lot about with our kids is just, are you seeing the one kid? Are you seeing the kid that maybe is alone? And are you taking a chance to go and just say hi and make sure he knows that you're there for him? Um, you know, I had a couple of experiences in high school that really shook me and helped me to see that. Um, I've, I've experienced things as an adult too, where I've seen kids go through really horrible things and I've seen kids take their lives, you know, unfortunately. And I think when you experience those things firsthand and you love people and you see the pain that sometimes they go through, um, you just have to assume, I think, that 80% of the people you're around are having a, maybe a tough time in life. Yeah. And try to be a little bit of a light in their day that day and just be kind. And, and I've also noticed in my life, you know, I was thinking about this, if it's okay, I was going to start with something too, that kind of leads into Absolutely. this, but I just hope that all your listeners just take a break right now. And just, um, I, I hope you know how valuable you are too. you know, each one of us. I think that's something we, we drive into our kids' heads a lot too, is their value, um, their, their individual worth. I just, you know, any of you that are struggling right now or going through things, I hope you just take a second and just realize how important you are. And just really, I, I know you're important and I hope that you know that. Um, each one of us is so valuable. 
our wives or spouses or significant others, whoever we're, you know, with, they're very, very valuable too. We need to take a minute and just think about that and just think about our own kids too and how valuable they are and let them know, you know, let them know how valuable they are and how much they mean to you. I'm a strong believer in God. You know, I think that's also something, you know, my own divine worth and understanding that I think is a part of why I am that way, I guess, is I've kind of gotten past um, worrying about myself. I don't know the right way to put that. I, of course I do. Um, but I try to think beyond myself. And I think when you do that, it just brings a lot of joy in your life. It just makes you happy. Yeah, and just reach out to the, everybody in your life and yeah. let them know what they mean to you. And uh, you never know if it's going to be that day for yeah. that person, right? That hope squad that was created because of the suicide Absolutely. epidemic throughout our school systems. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and if you feel something in your heart, right, follow it. Yeah. You know, if you feel a feeling to talk to someone, reach out to them, do You'll never regret you did. <laughs> right. Well, the world, the world kind of points us towards self-indulgence and self-importance, yeah. meaning everything revolves around me. Yeah. And that's where success and happiness are going to come from. Yeah. You know, what you realize over time, um, if you've been taught this or if you've experienced it, is it's that forgetting yourself, yeah. um, giving of yourself, thinking of others, all that other stuff will come because of that. Yeah. And true happiness comes from there. And I, we've talked about this a little bit on the podcast, but I'm not yeah. sure in those exact words, but it's a difficult leap of faith. You know what I mean? Like there's a point where you have to, and I had a situation happen to me as a young father where I, I had two um, elderly men who had just lost their wives at 65, right? As they were retiring, good men, right? And they're crying on my shoulder. We're just talking about this. And I had just that epiphany in my, in my mind, right? That like, I think we're doing this backwards, sometimes, right? We work real hard to create this wonderful life. And I think we can have a wonderful life in the thick of thin things, right? We, we can, you know, we can um, be more intentional about our time and be more intentional about what we do. And, you know, there's a golden rule that's been stated in so many different philosophies and cultures, but do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. I, I have found that to be just true. When you do that, I think that's when you finally find yourself and happiness and you kind of feel like, oh, this is, you, know, you, you may go into like comfort a friend or whatever. And when you leave, you're like, man, that was way better for me than probably it was for him or her. Right. Yeah. But I've had that experience a lot in life and I definitely can attest to that. It's a great reminder. Yeah. Awesome. So you do something with your family and you call them family councils, right? Yeah. We've got, uh, we have a lot of words for them, but yeah, there's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we have like uh, personal interviews with the kids that we do. And like me and my wife have like a little council every week and family councils. Yeah. So you have a, a parental council, just you and your yeah. wife. And then you have a family council with the kids and then you have individual councils or discussions yeah. between you and your wife and the kids, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, I served a mission for the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, you know, went out to serve Jesus and, you know, get to know people and love people and serve them. And honestly, everything I do in my life, I feel like it's had impact in a positive way. I was taught by someone else. I'd, I've never had an original idea in my life, <laughs> but they do some things, you know, as you're a missionary out there, you learn some principles like this that I've tried to take into my life and continue to, to do. But one of them was, uh, they had a thing called companionship inventory when yeah. you're a missionary. And it's where you sit down with your companion and you kind of go through the week and discuss what it is you're going to do and set goals and visions and things like that. And yeah, I remember having so much success with that um, when I was out on my mission in Lithuania and I thought, you know, I'm going to bring that home. And uh, my wife and I have tried to do that our entire marriage and it's been a blessing for us. Um, you know, for, for my wife and I, it's, it's different than with kids. Right. And I believe, right. As a, as a, as a father, one of the most important things that I can do is to start off by understanding, you know, my priorities, right. And my wife, she has the same vision in her mind, right. Uh, you know, and again, I know this is a podcast about being dads, right? And I know a lot of us have different makeups at home, so this doesn't work for everyone. But in my situation, we definitely have tried to to make it a reality that God comes first, you know, whatever type of, you know, belief system you have, right? And then my wife comes second, and then my kids come third. And we, you know, we love our kids, but I feel like that structure, that stability that, that we can have together, hopefully, I mean, we're blessed enough to, to be good friends and have that relationship. Um, but, you know, us trying hard to, to, to build that relationship and keep it strong, I think is really good for our kids. You know, with Melissa, we sit down and go over vision a lot. Um, like what's our vision for the long term, the short term. Uh, we actually coached with, I know Rob was on here, a good friend mm -hmm. of ours helped, you know, form the gentleman project We're as well. to talk about the vision roles and goals. Vision right? roles and goals. Yeah. I love vision roles and goals. We use that all the time. Right. So 
Um, and we, you know, we, we've done this path, you know, even before I met Rob, but we did it a little differently. And I like the way he, he kind of presents that, but we really focus in on vision. And then, um, my vision just excites me. It's something that's cool. It's really beautiful. It's, it's not who I am. Uh, it's who I try to be. Right. And I even have, I have that drawn down to almost like an individual person, right? I have people in my life who I've kind of looked at and said, you know, if I could be like that person, you know, I, boy, they seem like they're always kind or they're always loving, you know? And then um, we bring it down to, okay, I'm a dad, I'm a father, you know, I've got these different roles in life. How, you know, how does it look there, right? What kind of a dad am I? And so one of my, my vision with my kids is to be one of their very best friends, you know, and to be, to be madly in love with my children and to have them be madly in love with their dad. That's one of my visions there. And so we sit down and I look at that and I say, okay, what's the goal, right? How do I get there this year with my kids? And so like a good example of a, a goal I have is to go on a, a, we call them daddy dates, right? So I go on a daddy date every week with a different child. So I have uh, four children at home right now. So I go on four different daddy dates every month with a different child. And, and that's a fun thing that we do. And so Melissa and I will talk about our daddy dates and what we're going to be doing on those. And Melissa will come along often because they're fun and she wants to be a part of that, you know? <laughs> Um, you know, with her, we also talk a lot about, um, you know, just, just marriage, you know, how can I do better as a husband? Like, you know, right now we're talking about affection and, how, and what that means to her versus what it means to me, you know, just little things like that, right? We're trying to get to know each other better. We have a list of things. There's a book that we just read that we really have enjoyed called, uh, his needs and her needs, I think is what it's called. And I haven't read that one. Oh, it's a great book. And, and it, one of the things they get you to do is to sit down and look at, uh, things you can do together. And make like a list of things that um, we have like a hundred things or 200 things written down and we score them right. And the highest scoring things we kind of start doing first. And it's just been so fun. That's cool. To that's try to do idea. those things. But yeah, so that's what we do. So Melissa and I, and we have our, our little get together. I do one with myself every week where I sit down and really, they call it pre-week planning, right? Um, the becoming your best team is what they've taught me. And where I sit down and kind of look at my week and just say, you know, for example, I've got miles, uh, my eight year old, we had a, a daddy, sun date this week. We went to the trampoline park together and I felt old, but. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and you're today, you're still feeling old. Yeah. Right? Uh, he jumped around, had fun. I jumped around and sweat, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, I just feel like, you know, there, there's really critical conversations that we have to have with our kids, right. In life. And, and you talked about that at the beginning, right. And it's really hard to have those critical conversations if we don't have a vested relationship you know, if he right. doesn't feel like I've deposited a lot of money into his love bank, right? And I'm just some dictator dad telling him how to live his life. And it's hard. You know, I, I, maybe I'll talk about something for just a minute that's really hard for me and Melissa to kind of go through and really understand. But I think that a lot of us, when we have kids, we kind of have a bad idea. Um, we think we're going to make a bunch of mini-me's, right? And, and success for them will be just a little better than what dad did, right? Yeah. We all hope that our kids are better than us. But, you know, they better um, think, like, if I'm a Republican, right, they better be Republican. Or if I'm, you know, a member of this faith, they better be kind of a member of this faith. And I, I kind of had to get to a point where I said, you know, what do I really want for my kids? And I think that's a hard thing as a parent to come to that realization when they're young, especially. The better, the earlier, the better, right? And for us, it was, you know, I really don't care how they worship God right? I just, I hope that they're happy. I hope that they love what they believe in. I hope that they're passionate about what it is that they are passionate about. I hope that when I see them, they have a smile on their face. If they're trying to live in dad's shadow or mom's shadow, and they're just sad, and they're doing things because we want them to, and they don't want to let us down, I don't know if I'd be really happy with myself. And that's a hard thing, right? Because I, I love the things I love, right? And I want my kids to maybe love those things, right? And it's hard to, I think, sometimes to step away from that and say, you know, I love that. And that's wonderful. But, you know, this world is made up of so many amazing people. They're nothing like me. And I'm so grateful for that. You know, I can't imagine a world of me's. That would be horrible. You know? <laughs> like, hey, they'd be well insured, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, we, we need, but we need a world of I mean, imagine running, you know, Big D, for example, with everyone doing the same thing. It'd be horrible, right? We need people who, who love a lot of different things yeah. in this world. I like compare it to like an orchestra or a symphony or like a, a, a baseball team. If everyone was a first base player, we would not score really well. You know, you need that home run guy. You need the guy who's going to hit the singles. You need the guy who's going to 
play outfield really, really well, right? And, you know, just because I play first base and I love it and it's the best position in the entire world and my son wants to play center field, you know, I, that's okay. I hope he's really good at that and loves it, right? And I just use that analogy, hopefully, that we can kind of see our, our kids from a different perspective of like, you know, I've had a lot, of, you know, I've had a lot of experience with dads being kind of let down with their kids because they made choices that were different than the choices that they had made. And it was really hard for them and it was really difficult. And I just, as a young dad, I remember really intentionally feeling like, I don't want to be let down. I, you know, I'm looking at this kid that this dad's struggling with. I'm looking at him from a different set of, of glasses. You know, I'm just, what a good kid. He's just amazing. How's his dad so let down in him? And then I see it from his dad's perspective of like, oh, I get it. He's not in the family business. He's not, whatever. You know what I mean? Um, whatever it is that his dad or mom had kind of set up in their mind of like what success is. I'll tell a story that, that might help you understand kind of where I, I had this epiphany too. My dad grew up in a faith, right? Um, didn't really love it. It was tough for him. He didn't, you know, it wasn't something he really loved. Um, when he was in his 20s, he met my mom. Um, he, uh, you know, joined another faith. Uh, really loved it. It was something that, that resonated with him. And he went home to tell his dad, and his dad's an amazing man. Uh, he's no longer with us, just a great guy. But um, at that moment in his life, he kind of made a bad choice. He says, well, you're no longer my son then if you, if you decide to change faith, right? And that new faith for my dad was just so rewarding. And, and I'm a part of that faith, and it's so rewarding for me. And right, I could also see it from his dad's perspective, how maybe how hard that might have been for him to see his son you know, losing faith when really from our perspective, he was gaining faith. Right. I think there's so many, um, you know, things with our kids, we can kind of learn from that story is just to kind of think, you know, I want my kid to be happy. I want my son or daughter just to be happy and whatever they do and whatever they, they kind of lean towards. I, you guys have kids, you know how it is. I mean, the day they're born, they're kind of wired a certain way to a degree. Right. And, and they're all wired differently. Yes. And they're all wired differently. And I think sometimes we, we fight against that wiring you know, probably more than we should. And I think that's where we have a lot of our disappointment, heartache, or, or struggles, right? As parents yeah. is when we can't um, just kind of see who they are and really appreciate who they are for who they are. I think that's a big part of, like you said, you know, about the joy in life is I love who I am. I really do. Like I, there's things about me I would change that I'm working on, right? Like we all are. But overall, I really am happy with with who I'm becoming and, you know, who my wife is helping me become and my kids are helping me become and, you know, kind of the lessons we've had in life. Yeah. It's too bad. We're getting a pretty deep conversation here, which I love, <laughs> but you know, if you, if we could see our kids yeah. from a greater powers perspective, from Absolutely. God's perspective, and we actually knew what they were supposed to learn, what they were supposed to do, what they were supposed to go through on this earth in order to grow and become the soul I'll call it of yeah. who they're supposed to become. There's, you know, if you look at it through those eyes, we don't know what they're supposed to do. We might step back more. We don't, we're not, <laughs> we don't know what they're supposed to learn. We don't know what trials they are supposed to go through. We're not, we don't know if they should be following in our footsteps or totally not. Yeah. And we're not sure if that's good or bad. Absolutely. But I do think that one of the things that sometimes helps me and I, I don't do this near often enough, but it, there has been some times where I've taken a step back and said, let me try to see this from a bigger picture perspective. Yeah. Let me try to see this. What could be happening here from yeah. God's perspective? Inevitably you act differently. Absolutely. Even if you don't understand, at least you're more understanding. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, one thing that's helped me with that, you were talking earlier about uh, the, the personal interviews, right, with the kids. And so one thing we do there, we strive. So my wife is highly involved in this as well. So I do the girls one week and then I do the boys the next week and we switch off, right? And so we really try to be intentional in that meeting as well so that we develop that critical relationship for those critical conversations. And we try not to totally force our belief system on them. Right. And that's hard. Right. We want to talk about values. Um, we, we, you know, we spend time talking about values with them. Um, we, we spend time talking about worth, you know, individual worth. And, and, and I hope that they, and we, we try to help reiterate that it's not just them. That's that important, right? It's all of us. That's that important. Um, we, my kids all kind of have a vision in their own way. And it's interesting. We try to help a little with that, but I try to step back a little bit, not, 
you know, be too involved in them creating the vision. I try to kind of set the groundwork so they can kind of, when they're little, it's harder. I mean, sometimes you, you find yourself getting a little more involved in that area, but you know, vision for them isn't always that as big as what we think it is. Like I had a kid that, um, a little cute guy, one of my little cute guys wanted to do 20 push ups. That was a huge deal for him. Right. And so we spent a lot of time in our, in our little interviews talking about push ups, you know, and him doing push ups on the ground and showing me how tough he was getting. Right. It was a big deal. And so it was a big deal to me, you know? And so I think as a dad, it's really important for us to kind of step back. And if it's a big deal to them, it's a big deal to us. Another thing I think that's important that we do is uh, safety. You know, we, we talk a lot about safety. Um, our kids are in an environment right now, and I, I'm really kind of a, I don't know, I'm probably too far conservative in this area, but um, like our cell phones, you know, our kids walk around with mobile devices that just can have access to just anything. And, you know, an example I use is, you know, when you buy cable, you kind of can choose what you let into your house. And would you let some of those stations in your house that might be on the phone, right? And so Apple and Android and some of these devices have really made it a lot easier for us as parents to, to monitor that. And so we look at um, screen time. We have Apple devices and we look at screen time with our kids. We look at some reports. We, they can't delete their, their search history. So we'll look over that a little bit. We try not to be super, and it's not so much to like, um, to say, hey, you messed up, right? It's more so to let them know, hey, we love you. You have a developing brain. <laughs> Your frontal cortex is not fully developed. And you may make choices that maybe an older person wouldn't make. And I know that as you're developing that frontal cortex, if we can't help you a little bit here, you may, some neural pathways may be formed incorrectly. And we don't want you to do that. You know, we have a really low expectation of our kids. It's silly, but, you know, we, we talk and I said, you know, um, I have friends that will kind of share what their expectations are. And I say, you know, ours are don't become a drug addict, graduate from high school, um, try not to get pregnant or get someone pregnant in high school. And that's tough, right? That's something that I would hope that you guys can, you know, if, if you want to be sexually active, I hope you don't write kiddos, but if you do, let's talk about it, right? Let's, um, let's help you to, to be safe there. Right. Um, just some things like that. That's really our, our standards. You know? so, <laughs> some people may think we have higher standards, but with our kids, we talk about those kinds of things. Like these are the, these are the levels where you're going to let dad down. You know what I mean? Like this is where, and we'll help you through them. It's not like, you know, I know you had a good friend on here about drug addiction a while ago. I had my kids all listen to that. What a powerful, wonderful uh, thing. You know what I mean? To, to, but to understand also that it, it could be a part of all of our lives. It's something we have to be aware of. You know, protecting I think both sides of that coin are important though. I, I have kind of the same world. I'm like, yeah. guys, whatever you do, please don't do drugs. Yes. Like, don't even try it because you could be addicted on the first time and your whole yes. life is gone. Yes. And it's not your whole life, but, but it's that's hard. what I tell them. <laughs> but but <laughs> you, also, you mean, might be able to recover. You might not be able to, right? But I think there's a basement. There's challenges. But what you're doing with vision, yeah. that's the other side. Absolutely. That's the flip side of that coin. It's. I think it was Curtis Bennett who I always said, what's your ideal? He would ask his kids, what's your ideal? Yeah, don't be a realist, be an idealist. Be an yeah. idealist. And I love that part too, just yeah. as much. And so I think you've got both sides of the coin covered you is know, what I'm saying. I'll share you on vision something that's really fun, right? Something that I've done with all my kids is I'll usually grab them, put them in the front seat of my car, and I'll say, let's go grab a soda. And we'll go to like, so I live in Weber County, and, I'll, and we'll go to like Logan to get a soda, right? And I'm like, it's a long, like I want it to be a long drive. <laughs> it's like an hour. Yes, hour an hour-ish. Right? And I'll just, I'll look at him and I'll just say, you know, tell me what your life looks like when you're my age. And I don't care what they do for a living. And if they care, then I care, right? But it's more like, you know, what does it look like? Like, what does your life look like? And that's kind of where their vision starts is those kinds of conversations. And it's interesting what they say back often is like, you know, I hope I live in a house. You know, I hope I, uh, they can afford a house. Yeah, I know seriously <laughs> lately. Um, you know, I, I hope I have a loving spouse, right. I hope that I have, um, a couple of kids maybe, right. I hope I'm a dad or a mom, you know, I, I've never had any of my kids come back and be like, I want to be an insurance agent, you know, like <laughs> ever, <laughs> you know, and, and it's interesting. So a lot of times with vision, it's really focused in on just some of those more simple things is like, Hey, you know, what does a good husband do? Right. And how can you prepare for that now? You know, a good wife, like, okay, you're, you're 15 right now. You're not getting married anytime soon, please. Um, but what does that look like now? You're going to marry that person. How do you become that person that they'll want to actually be with? Right. And 
that's a lot of like the vision stuff with my kids, kind of where it starts from and then helping them to like, you know, when they move to goals, you know, some of them, it takes a little longer than others, but then, you know, how do you, how do you make a simple goal to get towards that vision? You know, a little, maybe something you do this, this year, um, that's going to help you to, to be just a little bit better in that area of your life that you want to improve upon. Um, and I can tell you the more I get involved, the worse it goes. And so a lot of it for me, I found with this is just to, to, to listen to them, to ask them probing questions, you know, to get them to talk, guide them. Yeah. Even when we're going over values, for example, I'll try to get them to, to share their thoughts about values. We'll read a little thing about values. You know, um, you know, we use a thing called the for strength of youth pamphlet in the, in the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that we'll share with our kids and we'll read about different subjects every week that deal with like value propositions, you know, things that they can kind of think of. And then the hard thing again, as a parent that we deal a lot with in our, in our interviews as well, what if in a value situation, um, they don't necessarily agree with dad, right? And that happens a lot. And then I have to take a step back and kind of think of it, like you said, Corey, from that higher level is like, am I okay with this or am, am I not okay with this? And a lot of it is talking to them and understanding where they're coming from. What is their true motivation here? You know, what is it that they're really wanting, you know, uh, and then what is the happiness level? And a lot of it comes down to like what Corey said is like, is this, you know, is this leading down a road that we can't come back from real easy? You know, there are roads that are hard to come back from and there are roads that are easier to come back from. And, um, and, and when you talk about our base standards, that's really, I, I'm trying to keep them from roads that they don't understand yet that I do, that I don't want them to come down. You know, I'm so grateful at 45 right now that I don't have a drug addiction, right? I, I, I know that there are wonderful people out there that do, that are incredible people. And it's a part of their life and their story but that's a difficult road to go down, you know, and I, I am so grateful that that's something that wasn't a part of my life. I had parents that, that kept me away from that, thankfully, and helped me with that. And just so grateful, you know, for that part of it. The biggest focus I have on those, those kid meetings is just making sure that we're talking, you know, the big important questions and answers that have happened with my kids that have really shaped, I think a lot of their value and who they are happens when they get home from a date right? It happens when they get home from a party. It happens when they get home from a school and watch a kid get picked on or, or, you know, something like that. And, and what happens, I think, because of these weekly conversations is dad's accessible. He's there. Um, they know that I care deeply about them. I mean, it's hard. That's the other thing I'll tell you is I, I, one thing I wanted to share at the beginning that I didn't do really well at is I fell all the time, right guys. And so I, you know, there's weeks I, I don't do really well at this and I have to go back and, and start over and do a better job. I yell at my kids sometimes. I wish I didn't, right? I'm working hard on that. Um, so for me, a lot of it is also just keeping that dialogue open. I love you. I set aside time for you. You're my rock. You know, uh, Stephen R. Covey wrote about rocks, gravel, sand, and water and putting your rocks in life first. And so you know, for me, when you look at my schedule on Sunday, I, it's a kind of a more free day for me. I've got a half an hour with my wife. I got a half an hour with myself. I've got half an hour with each kid that I'm going to be working with that week. And I think for them, that just puts in perspective to them. Like, yeah, dad's busy. He's got a lot going on, but I'm one of his most important, you know, parts of his life. And that is how I feel. Right. And so I think as dads, sometimes we feel these things and we have these emotions and we want to do these things. And we think it's going to take a ton of time and work sometimes, I think, to, to make those big changes. And I think it's really just consistent, small things. And uh, I would say I probably spent an hour and a half a week on this. It's not like I'm devoting <laughs> maybe less, right? Yeah. And you, with an eight-year-old, it's even different. You know, you're an 18-year-old and sometimes it goes longer, right? An eight-year-old, it's more like, hey, daddy loves you. How was your day? I sure love you. Give me a hug. You know, here's some one-on-one -on -one time. You know, what do you want to talk about? You know? And then when they have those critical moments, they, it's comfortable. Now, I've had conversations with my children, with other children in the room and uh, older kids primarily. And, and I've had kids come up to me later and go, I wish I could talk to my dad like this. Hmm. You know, I wish I could just have this open conversation uh, where nothing's off limits, right? Where, where like, I can tell your kids, know that you're going to love them no matter what they say, no matter what they're thinking. You know, a good buddy of yours talked about this a little bit. I really enjoyed that is that, you know, we have this open dialogue where, hey, you can say whatever you want to say. I'm not going to judge you. I love you. And quite honestly, you may be smarter than me. I'm going to listen to you. You know, you may have an answer 
Um, it's way beyond. I remember thinking about his kids and thinking, man, <laughs> he probably listens to them. They're so sharp and they seem like they're so well put together, man. I, and I have kids like that, you know, where I, I have a son right now and a daughter and my, even my, my middle son, he's 14. He says things all the time where I'm like, holy Toledo, that was brilliant. And my little 11 year old, I mean, she does things all the time where I'm just like, I mean, so creative and so fun that I, those little things are just so important. I think as a dad to, to just understand you don't have all the answers and that's okay. Yeah. So you talk about small and consistent things. So important. Right. Yeah. So the things that I take away from these podcast episodes are generally the ideas. So, you know, journaling with my sons was my gentleman project. That's where the whole name of this thing came from. Absolutely. Corey's got certain things he does that he could call the gentleman project in his house. So one of your things that you shared today was long car rides to go get a soda, right? And having those, that could be one of your gentleman projects. Share with us some of those other small and consistent things that you do that you would call your gentleman project. Well, I talked about one of them for a little bit, but the daddy date, that's a big deal in our home. I've tried to make it a big deal. It's a big deal to me. You know, if I want to be wildly in love with my kids, I got to know who they are. Right. And so, you know, that's a big deal. We, you know, I, I, I sit down with them and we talk about it. Um, what do you want to do? We start to think about it a month ahead. Um, that's something I just love. It's just something that's a big deal. That's my, one of my gentleman projects, I would say for sure. Uh, the car rides. I love going on car rides with my kids. We try not to get too involved in a lot of extracurricular activities as a family that will divert away from family time. Another one that I think is our a gentleman project in our home is every night we try to sit down together and just, you know, talk about things as a family, um, read the word of God is a big deal to us. And not, you know, we have an eight-year-old. That's not what you may think. <laughs> you know, it's really simple. Sometimes we try to make it more than it is, and that's when it always goes bad. And then just pray and express our love together. You know, that's something that we really, we try to do in our home a lot of um, simple stuff, you know, just little, and I'd say my gentleman project is probably just the, the knowing doing gap, right? There's all these things that we know we should do. It's just taking the small time to do those little consistent things on a regular basis. One thing that we try to do is do a family night every week where we just go out and do something fun, you know, just like Friday night, maybe is, and we do it differently every week, depending upon the schedules, right? But we try to every weekend have one night be more family focused and the other night more friend focused, right? They can go be with friends on Saturday, but Friday, let's reserve that for our family and maybe go on a hike or, or go do something that's just the family and develop those relationships and bonds. You know, I, I try to tell this to my kids, but I had a lot of really good friends in high school. If you're listening, I still love you, right? <laughs> you're still my good friends, but I don't see them as much, right? You kind of grow up and you get older and it's your kids. It's your brother, right? My brother, I see him all the time. My sister, I love you if you're listening. Move back to Utah. I don't see her as often as I'd like anymore because she moved, but I'm still close with her. You know, those are the people who you end up being around when you get mm-hmm. older. And that's why I teach my kids is, you know, this is these people right here. I have to fight with you sometimes to be around. This is who you're going to fight for when you get older. Like These are the people who you're going to care most about. I know it's hard to imagine as a senior, that you're going to care about your sister more than your best friend, but you will someday, yeah. you know? Yeah, no doubt. You know, one of the things you talked about kind of hit a chord with me that, you know, we, we have all these amazing fathers on the podcast and um, people probably assume that I'm pretty good at it, but I'm not. That's why I like the podcast. (laughs) But you mentioned that you said, you look, I'm not perfect. And sometimes what I'm talking about is only an hour a week. Yeah. And, and, and I think I'm reminding myself and the listeners that, you know, from, from idea to do or whatever you said, yeah. it doesn't have to be like this Herculean, no crazy effort. If it right? is, it won't probably last. It probably won't work. <laughs> and so you might sometimes be listening to this. I do this and I'm like overwhelmed with, oh man, I got to do better. I got to do better. I got to do better. And I do, but pick one thing. Yes. Do a drive a week. Yes. Or do, you know, do one sit down with your kids a week. Yeah. Like start one a month, one a month, whatever. I think it's important for people to realize that from going from zero to hero, it doesn't take this astronomical Herculean effort to do it. Yeah. Tell them you love them, spend some time with them, get consistent with some interaction and some talking about values. Yeah. It's, it's like physical activity, right? Yes. Exactly. So you can go to the gym. Just so tough. You can go to the gym like one time and lift really, really hard. Yeah. That's not going to do anything for your overall physical health. Yeah. But if you walk a mile a day 
for a half a mile a day every single day, then your health will start to change. And it's the same thing, that consistency, those small, consistent things that you do um, that don't take a lot of time. Well, I think that there's also like a feeling, and I struggle with this, right, where eventually I'll be a good dad, right? And I feel like it's important to realize, like, again, divine worth, right? God gave you these kids if you believe in a God, right? Um, if you don't, then they're your natural children, right? However you look at this, the universe gave you these kids. They're yours, right? They need you to just do what you can, like just love them, serve them, be kind to them and tell them you love them. Like if you're not doing that, start there, you know, just tell them you love them. And just, I had an experience with my oldest son. that was really interesting. Um, but I sat down with my kid, he was struggling with some things. And I just sat down and I said, you know, your dad needs help. Um, I love you very much, but I feel like I'm doing this thing. Not, not quite right. Can you help me with it? right? You're, you know, you're, you're one of my best friends and I I need your help. Will you help me? And in that world, and that was kind of the the prompting I had right with him, but it changed the whole conversation. And he immediately was like, dad, I need help with things too. Can we talk? Hmm. And I think there's nothing wrong with like being open with your kids that like, you know, your dad was okay in high school, but he did this wrong. (laughs) You know, like I swore in high school, I, whatever, you know what I mean? I think that it's important for our kids to know we're people, we're human. My kids, they know my, my past. They know the stupid, the bad, the ugly. You know, I sat down with my wife. I told you I, I love at first sight, right? On our second date, I sat down with her. I said, hey, I don't want to have a broken heart, right? So before I, I get into this relationship with you, I need to tell you what a loser I am. And I, I talked to her for like 45 <laughs> minutes and just laid out like all these horrible things that I'd ever done, right? And I just looked at her and said, do you still like me? She says, well, before we go down this path, I want to share with you all the horrible things I've done. And she did the same thing. It was so... Wonderful. You know, we approached that relationship just with wide open eyes. We knew each other. We loved each other despite our weaknesses. And, and we've tried to help our kids to learn the same thing. Like your dad, and I share this with my kids, and I'm with a lot of young men all the time. I'm like, if there's one thing you can learn from me, and I try to mentor my kids, my, my, my young men, my kids, all these people, and is like, adults are guessing. Like, if you don't know it, we're guessing. And so if, if we guess wrong, let us know. You know, so I'll tell my kids, like, I'm trying, man. Like, I'm guessing, like I'm doing my best. I've read a lot of books, but they don't tell me how to parent you. So, yeah. <laughs> so if I do something that just doesn't fit right, like let me know. And so it's funny, our kids, if my wife and I are having a disagreement, a lot of times our kids will step in and be like, dad, yeah. Remember what we talked about? Yep. Yeah. And I'll stop. You know, they, they'll correct me now, which is awesome. I had a pretty powerful experience. Probably it was within the last two weeks uh, with one of my kids and I, I dealt with a discipline issue a certain way and there was a natural consequence for their inaction and it upset them. And, you know, I texted my wife and I said, well, you know, dad's gone and done it again. You know, like I'm their favorite person in the world and now they're downstairs crying and I don't know what I did wrong. And my wife in her infinite wisdom said, why don't you ask her what? you should have done of it, how she would have handled that issue and then just listen. So I did and I got no feedback. (laughs) Um, I got no, you know, you, well, you should have done this or I should have been able to do this or anything. Yeah. I just said the same thing. I'm, I'm a dad trying to do what I think is best. And sometimes I choose the wrong thing. So now's your chance. I'm open ears tell me how you would have handled it. Yeah. And they didn't say anything different to me. They just said, no, that's probably the way I would have handled it. And then it kind of, and then I said, okay, then are we good? Like, you know, I tried my best. I did the thing you would have done. So we're good with the natural consequences, the way they came down. (laughs) And, you know, sometimes you just need your wife to just say, go ask them what they would have done. You know, and, and it worked. That was a good idea. What you said too reminds me of one of the best uh, attributes I learned from my parents, you know, my dad, great man, um, oftentimes would lose his temper, right? Not, not abusively or anything like that, but, um, he was always quick to say he was sorry. He would come in and apologize and give me a hug. And you know, he would say things like, Hey, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have, you know, I shouldn't have yelled at you or whatever. I shouldn't have said what I said, or I shouldn't have done what I did. And I really, you know, our kids are tough. Um, we shouldn't kick ourselves so hard sometimes for when we let ourselves and them down. 
and we just should say we're sorry. And, and there's something powerful about that. You know, there's something really cool about your kids knowing, hey, I, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. And then they can emulate that too. We all need to do that. I mean, I've done it in my job. I've done it in my marriage. I mean, I think I say sorry more than about anything anymore. You know, just <laughs> if you're talking to people, you have to apologize. You know, that's just how it goes. Well, Corey, how would you, uh, how would you put a bow on, on today? What did you learn today? Many things. I like the drive idea a lot. Um, I need to counsel more with my wife. I like that thought a lot. Well, Corey, I know you're real smart, but she might even be smarter. You'll find she's that. way smarter. Yeah, you, my wife we're is very awesome. aligned. So we don't, because yeah. we're so aligned and because we see the world the same way, absolutely. then it kind of leads to down a path of maybe not doing that as much, but talking about how to talk with the kids and how to, you know, give them, I I've, I've tried to do vision roles, goals, and I keep failing. It's like hard. I, I do it and then it falls apart and then yeah. I do it. And so I think re-energizing that is a good lesson learned, but ultimately there's about four or five gentlemen project kind of things you're doing with your family. But you it's know, blast. there's a lot of that, that this podcast is chuck full of yeah. things you could do and you could pick one or two or three. Um, and I really liked what we talked about, um, regarding seeing the bigger picture. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of times, like you said, we, we expect not our kids to be perfect, but to, you know, we're teaching them everything we can and we're yeah. giving them everything we can and we want them to be amazing and they have their own faults. Yeah. And many of those faults are not learned, nor would yeah. they get, nor are they from us. And they they're may just be, who they are. And they may even be <laughs> strengths that are, they're overdoing their strengths, right? Yeah. And they have strengths we probably don't even know about. Absolutely. The other thing I would say, sorry to keep going a little bit, but the other thing I would say is it's never too late. So if you're a parent and you're like, well, I didn't do that good the last 18 years, start now. Absolutely. Best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Always. Right? So, um, and if you're, if you didn't feel like you did great with your kids and you want to do a gentleman project thing, get your grandkids. You can yeah. still add value, right? Yeah. There, you can still do little things to change a little one's life yeah. by just showing them consistent love yeah. in, in a gentleman project way. Well, love it. You said it. I took away small and consistent makes progress in any direction that you choose. Yeah. I love how you compare it to working out or exercising. It, We've totally all done agree. that, yeah. you know, like on January 2nd, January 3rd, everybody hits the gym <laughs> and then everybody's so sore they don't go back, you I'm, know? Let's just um, make our kids more important than our body, right? Yeah. Which is hard, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Jeremy. Um, we always end the podcast by asking our guests what they think it means to be a gentleman. And you've been around the Gentleman Project long time. So um, I'm looking forward to your answer. You know, I, I thought a lot about this and this one's been hard. I, I'm going to give two and they're both two words. So that's four. I don't know. <laughs> the first one is, you know, there's a Tim McGraw song out there called Humble and Kind. I just, I don't know, the last couple of years, that's really been a big part of my life. You know, I definitely don't feel like I'm very humble or kind sometimes. And I, you know, I appreciate your words earlier, but um, I think that's a big part of being a gentleman is just being humble and being kind. You know, those two things, it's something that we can think about. It's pretty easy to remember. And the second one comes, comes from Psalms. I've been thinking about this literally since 2008, <laughs> but um, clean hands and a pure heart, you know, I, very similar to humble and kind, but just you know, that idea of like, as a dad, you know, that you've got a pure heart and you've got clean hands and you're doing your best to say you're sorry and do those things we talked about earlier with your kids. But those are two things that kind of reverberate with me as I think of being a gentleman myself and the things I'm working on. Awesome. So Jeremy, you listen to the podcast every week, oh, yeah. right? So have you shared it with a lot of people? Oh yeah. And have they come back to you and said any feedback or... Absolutely. Awesome. So if you're listening to the podcast and maybe something that Jeremy said today resonated with you, um, reach out and maybe gift the, uh, the influence of what it did for you to somebody else this week. You know, this might be the greatest compliment to your podcast, but I, uh, when you asked me to be on it, I, I said no. And, and the biggest I reason did. I said no <laughs> was I just, the caliber of guests that you had on here intimidated me, honestly. And that's a good, like, uh, You've had such incredible speak, you know, guests come to your podcast and it's definitely any, you know, anyone who wants to be a good dad, this is a good place to go and hear what people are doing and what they're thinking. And like you both said, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not so much one that take, that walks away thinking I need to change things, but it gives me that like 
okay, I can do this. You know, yeah. I can do this. Like I, you know, when it comes down to Sunday and it's time to do my PPIs again, and maybe I'm tired and I want to go to sleep because I went to bed too late. I think, okay, I listened to the gentleman, you know, podcast, gentleman project podcast. I can do this. Like I can, you know, this guy's doing this or this guy's doing that. I can at least <laughs> do my interview with, with my kid thing. this week. Yeah. I can at least, you know, do my minimal effort of, <laughs> of showing my love to my kid this week. Right. Yeah. And uh, again, just those of you who are listening, I just hope, you know, like we're all doing our best. Like, you know, I hope you don't feel like, um, I definitely don't feel like I'm a great dad, right? I, I definitely feel like I'm a struggling dad doing my best. We're all in the same boat. Just do the next best thing. Like just take the step, say you're sorry, say you, I love you, whatever it is. And just know you're so valuable. Like, um, you know, if all of us just knew our worth and if we just do the worth of our wives and children or, you know, our significant others or whoever in our life that is so valuable to us, our parents, our brothers and sisters, um, and we, and we, and we constantly lived that the best we could, this would be, and it is a wonderful world, but it'd be even a much better world for all those kids. So there you go. Thanks, Jeremy. Jeremy Dunn, thanks for joining us today. It was a pleasure pleasure to have you with us and a pleasure to see you again. Please give our best to your family. Will do. Thanks for joining us this week. If you haven't followed the podcast, make sure that you do so that you can get all the episodes and you can share it with uh, anybody from there. And uh, if you'd like to reach out and engage with us, please do so. Uh, You can reach us at info at thegentlemanproject.com. And we will talk to you next week. Make it a great week. I'm Kirk Chug. And I'm Corey Moore. Thanks, everyone.